today I thought we'd run through um, some ways of how you prepare your wood to form a tenon to go into your chuck. Now, I suppose most, well, a lot of people buy ready prepared blanks. So that's not really a problem. Um, mostly I use this type of wood. It's straight off the tree, barks on it, whatever. Uh, and obviously it's really off center. Whereas a prepared blank is reasonably round and reasonably well balanced. So how do you find the center of a piece of wood? Well, there's, there's various methods. Um, one is that system where you find the middle yeah or oh, what i've done actually is um <clears throat> i'm i've got some perspex and what i've done is i've cut some rings out let's, let's get rid of that a minute i've cut some rings out of the perspex and the various sizes so you've got um, three and a half, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, seven and eight. So what I did was I found the centre and I bandsawed that out. So it's approximately three and a half inches. OK, so what I do, well, one method is if I get that piece of wood, it's, you know, it's not round. So I find a piece of wood that's going to give me the maximum out of it. And it's not that one. There's a five inch. Well, that's that's pretty close. Yeah. So don't forget, drill the hole in the middle of it there. So all I need to do really is um, find that. Hold it there. Make a mark. So there's there's the center okay very simple perspex it can be made out of you could do it out of card you could do it out of wood whatever you want but they are really useful so if i was doing an ordinary that one there find one oh there you go. that's that's not far off at all yeah, so there it is. I can mark the center. Yeah. Let's do that again. Mark the center. Very easy. What you do now, or what I do now, is I drill the hole. So I'll drill the hole down the center there, ready for my screw chop. Now you've all seen these homemade uh, coach screw all the way through. Get this right in a minute. Um, and it's super glued in. Now on this one in particular, I've got two. Um, two tenons on it two different size chucks there's one and there's the other there this is the one i've used most often to be honest got spaces on it so that depends how deep i want to go into the wood i can take them off and i've got quite a fair depth there more than i need really okay so that's the screw chuck so what are the methods are there well you've got your your face plate of course you found your center as well you found your center so all you need to do is put that in the middle drill your holes in uh, the screws don't need to be too deep uh, there's no need to put three inches of screw in the wood no need at all so when that's done, and that just screws straight onto the spindle. So you've got a really firm holding there. Same applies with this one. You found your middle. There you go. 
drill your holes and it's done. Another method is um, faceplate ring. Yeah, can you see that? That's the bit that obviously goes on the wood and that bit there is the bit that goes on your chuck. So that's slightly dovetailed. So what will happen, that goes on there, you tighten your chuck up and that holds it. Okay. Again, you've got your centres. Find that approximate centre. These are all countersunk as well. So your screw head will go right down. Um, so just screw into those. Maybe probably four, four screws will do. And then mount it on you in your chuck. So that's that's those methods. Let's say for the sake of it, you don't want to drill holes in your wood. So one method, well two methods really, you still gotta find the center. So there we go. We're still happy with that. We've actually found the center there. So what we can do now is either use <clears throat> a step center which is you all know that spring loaded in the middle or a four prong okay yeah now what you can do without taking your chuck off they will go in there providing providing they're clamped on the straight bit, not on this angled bit. So in other words, that would go in like that and it will catch in the back of the jaws. And same, this one, step centre, put that in and you can tighten it up. The only problem I've got with that method is that you're going to be working ever so close to your chuck. So really and truly, Let's get rid of them. The best way to do this is to take your chuck off. It's safer. It's much safer. Okay. So now you have a choice of what tool to use, either the step center or go down a bit. Let's try again. Step center or the full prong okay so let's talk about the tail stock end now you're going to need to support the piece of wood so you have your normal rotating pointy bitty one or you've got this one that is a rotating ring yeah can you see that I would prefer this one. It gives a lot more support than that one. So it's going to grip all the way around there. Okay, so that bit goes in your tailstock. Bring that up. There you go. That's it. So let's say we're going to use the. Um, oh, yeah, another good point. If you're going to use a four prong, find, get that pointy bit right in your hole. Notice all the technical terms. And what I would do, but probably not on your lathe, <clears throat> take it off and do it on the floor, is knock that in. So as you leave an impression of the four prongs. Okay, so then that can go in there, or, or your step centre can go in there. So it's a case of marking that with the hole. And then bring your tail stop up and tighten it up. Now make sure this end, this end is really square on and they've got, you've got a good bite either with the step centre or with that one. 
so then it's a case of tightening it up making sure you're locked off tighten it up release that there you go and what you can do but with with gentle cuts round it down and then put your tenon on but it's got to be sharp tools it's got to be reasonably quick quick speed uh, whatever you're comfortable with <clears throat> if <clears throat> excuse me if you're um, a bit too aggressive what's going to happen that's going to catch and it will spin so in other words you're going to lose the grip on your four pronged or step center so just bear in mind if that's what you want to do but don't forget if you do use a screw chuck to do this which i'm really happy with using let's get the screw chuck that's not much of a hole to drill and that gives you a good grip i usually whatever size screw that is i usually do half a mil when i drill a hole i use um a half a mil um less diameter on the drill bit so if that was a 10 if that is a size 10 i would use a nine and a half drill bit just to give it that bit of extra grip but whatever you do it's got to be gentle cuts there's no point in being aggressive and i would use a um a spindle roughing gouge i mean you can get away with a with a three eighths or a half inch uh, bowl gouge which is what i sometimes do and uh, but it's purely personal preference but i'm an advocate of screw chucks they've they've never i don't think they've ever let me down the only time they let you down is if your wood is particularly damp uh, and you do have a little bit of a catch it will spin round in there just like that that's the only thing but that doesn't happen very often that's why i do um a half a mil less uh, drill size well, I hope that's been of some use. It's another method um, if you don't want to drill a hole. So we've uh, we've covered how you hold the wood in the lathe. So why not let's form a spigot? So I've got this piece of uh, oh, it's wet, and I think it's beach. Yeah, I think it's beach. This has been wrapped up for about mm, oh before before Christmas was it? Yeah, before Christmas. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So what we've got to do? We've still got to find the centre. So we get our trusty piece of uh, pair specs. Okay. So there's going to be round about the center so if i make my hole there it is what you need to do now is to drill a hole for the um yeah we need to drill the hole for the screw chuck so what I've done here, <clears throat> it's a piece of masking tape. So that's how far I want to drill down. Okay, so I don't even go any further than that. That's going to be the depth of the screw chuck. Okay right so that's as far as i need to drill so we'll put the screw chuck in this one is made of plastic i've got a wooden one as well but i haven't got a preference but i use this more than anything to be honest so it's just a case of winding that on. Now that is that 
that's good and tight that's fine so we'll bring up the tail stop now tighten it that is not going to go anywhere make sure you're all everything's nice and tight and firm we can bring this up now <clears throat> just check it that it doesn't foul the uh just move it back a touch it doesn't foul the wood check me height that could do with going up a little bit Oh no, look at that. I think we're clear now, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. Right, speed. Um, I'm going to turn it right down now to uh, 375. Turn it on, that's way too slow. So I can build the speed up now. I'm quite happy that everything is nice and tight. So there's about, that's about 800. Um, I'm going to use a spindle roughing gouge. The handle is well down. I'm just checking for the height. So I'm going to be using to the left and to the right of the spindle gouge, not the centre. gap between the wood and the um, tool post is getting wider all the time tool rest of it so stop the lathe you can move it in now a bit more give it maximum support that's okay Notice I'm going off the end. I'm not coming into the end. I'm going off the end. If you have got a spindle roughing in, you could use just an ordinary. I've got a three eighths ball gouge here. Handle down. Move the tool rest in. Just check everything. Do that. Just check everything is nice and tight. Okay. So now I'm going to turn the speed up again now because it's a little bit rounder. So that's just about a thousand. Can you hear the difference in the sound here?
double. Oh yeah, there's still still this A, yeah. <clears throat> Too bothered about that because what we're concerned about now is actually putting the spigot on aren't we yes Chris we are okay Right. Now, when I form the spigot or tenon, the other way you want to call it, I um, I've got some calipers. Now they're super glued there, so as they don't move. That is set to the optimal size of my chuck. So, in other words, when the wood goes in there, the grip is at its roundest, so I'm getting the best grip. And they're set for my lathe at 40, 40, 45, 45 mil. That's, yeah, that's right. Um, but I usually, let's start again. They're set at 45. Okay. That's the optimal size for in there. Is that clear? I hope I've made that clear. Um, now I want the parting tool. Okay, where are they? There they are. So we're miles out yet. But what I like to do is go in there and go to the top again. In there, not on the end, in there, and then put those behind until I get the size I want. There you are, that's the size. Then all I do is take that down one. There you go. If I go back on there, make sure that that is absolutely 90 degree angle there, it's sitting nice and square, so that it sits in your chuck. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, make sure that's absolutely square, so as it sits in your chuck. Um, it is quite nice and smooth. No bumps. So I'm convinced that's going to sit okay. Okay. So I can undo that. Take that out of the way. Lock that off. Then I can take that off. the chuck out now something we should think about you know the inside of your chuck 
um, in here it gets full of dust and it may stop the tenon from sitting nice and square so it's a good idea I think we can undo that now so we can move it to brush it out don't forget if the dust builds up in there it could just knock the tenon out a little bit in size so as it doesn't sit absolutely square so if I put that in there now <clears throat> Tighten it up. It's tight. That's running great. But what I would do now, we would get this has got a bit of a flat, you can see that there, can't you? So undo that, bring that up. And that one. Now the speed is still at a thousand as it was before. Now I know that and I know it's going to be okay. There you go. So what I can do now is um, turn into a cylinder. So what, what could we actually do with it? It's a good man. We could actually make a, could make a box out of it. Um, to get rid of that, we're going to have to take it down a good deal further. Or we could part that off and waste it and use that as something else. Uh, we could turn it into um, the vase. Vase, yeah. Um, a vase with a lid. Yeah, could be. Could be. I can still hear it clicking, so it's still there. Wow. It's gone. But just get a nice finish on that. Good practice, good practice. Yeah, that's got rid of all the marks. So well, I've gone a bit further than I wanted to there. Anyway, you've seen how we form a spigot now. I hope that's been of help to you. Um, just remember down this end in the chuck to get your optimum. So, should we do it? Yeah. All right. We'll do it. Let's show you. Let's take that off. The way I find or the way I achieved um, <clears throat> the optimum size was I put a um, parting tool, my thinnest parting tool, in the jaws. Tighten them up. That's it. There you go. Then what I did was I got my various and do them, and then I measured the inside so you can just see there that's the gap that is near as damn it round now. 
so there you go and that is like i said 45 40 well nearly 46 and that how i got the size to do then and glued it now that's going to stay the same i've also made another one because i've got a smaller chuck as well um i made a small and smaller set for them again super glued so as they don't move um anything else is there any well not really it's um it's up to you now um i hope you found that was useful um i don't know what else to say really hope you've enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon bye bye